If you watched my video the other day and wondered why all my emperors and vaders were missing from the unit, well at least most of them, this is the reason. As we're not only going to be looking at what some of you have deemed the best Lego set ever produced in Vader's Transformation Chamber, and I'll admit this alongside the Han Carbonite Freezing Chamber is definitely one of the sets I remember having the most fun with when I originally built it. And on top of the play features, we will also be comparing how some of the minifigures, like Palpatine, like Vader, have been improved over time and different things you can upgrade about the old ones. But I think we'll take a look at the actual set first because it's a nice round build and that makes it perfect for displaying not only on shelves but on your desk. Maybe it's a centerpiece of some sort of workstation and that's not even the best part. We'll get into breaking down the set later but as you've seen we do have a play feature where you can stand Anakin, a burnt up crispy Anakin on the table in the middle. And this actually takes place on Coruscant at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Don him with his armor and then let's get a close up for this bit. Once Anakin is lowered, you just twist a little gear at the front to reveal burnt up Anakin in his Vader suit. This is one of only two minifigures that have come with this style of head. The other being in a Kenobi set and then lower Vader's mask onto the minifigure just like we see in the show and you can even recreate the iconic breathing effect yourself. <laughs> and I think this is honestly what makes this set worth every single penny. Now sometimes you can take Vader's helmet off but it tends not to work and you have to just reset it manually but as you know we haven't seen this minifigure too many times before when he returned for Kenobi we did get an updated face print so it's technically a completely different minifigure because this Darth Vader was replaced with one with a very happier expression you can see he's grinning so it matches up to the end of Return of the Jedi which funnily enough is what this suit is screen accurate to and most recently we've been given a much grumpier expression for Darth Vader, which I think definitely adds up a bit better to what he is feeling. But these Vaders are both 20 years after Revenge of the Sith, so I like the fact we got a second burnt Anakin headpiece underneath the mask. Though that is definitely the best play feature of this entire set, and the main grab if you do want to try and build this yourself, you only really need at most the front and back panels. So, Lego really made use of every other design. We'll start off with the part closest to the screen, looking at this weapons rack, which of course, a Star Wars set, nine times out of 10, well, in fact, it's probably only one time out of 10, has to include a weapons rack. Usually it's the advent where we're complaining about these, but I think this brings the set together so well. You see a little desk with a bunch of tools in the scene, but let's forget about Canon for just one second. This comes with a probe droid of sorts, which is always welcome. I have like a ton of these from Luke's Land Speeders. We get them in Maul Sith Infiltrator, and it's just a welcome addition. Doesn't take up many pieces, but we also get the lightsabers of Vader and Palpatine. Palpatine's in gold because he built it that way. He's sort of taking the mick out of the Jedi craft, but that's really cool because we can give them to our minifigures and reenact so many different scenes. If you have a Mace Windu from a different set, there wasn't a Mace Windu at the time this set came out, but soon there'd be one in the Grievous Bike Speeder. And if you did pick it up like me, you could reenact scenes from Revenge of the Sith. And it's just a very nice accessory to get. I speak a lot about characters coming with accessories that don't match up to what they're doing in the scene, but because it's stashed away on the side, I really do like the fact that we get it included in this set. Now, if you didn't want it as part of the set, what you can do is press down on either side here and just flick it off and it will just fall off the display and it still looks pretty good without it. Alternatively, you can just pop off this piece in general and put, I think, a two by six, which is what they put on the other side, though. Really, it doesn't make that big of a difference because they're keeping to the same color scheme throughout this set. We've got some clear studs and tiles to 
match up to the white and act like the lights we see on the floor. And most of it is dark bluish grey, though we get a hint of black and the odd light bluish grey element here and there. Now, if we were to start taking this set apart, you'll be able to see so many different colours. There's a blue plate there, there is a red tile under here, there's a bunch of red Technic elements hidden. I mean, if we were to try and pop this up safely using a brick separator, ignore me trying to pull it up the last couple of minutes, you should be able to see one of the red Technic tiles. Well, the red tile and the Technic beam that is holding this thing together. But the Pro Droid isn't the only other minifigure. I'm going to class them as a minifigure, not quite a minifigure, but they're definitely a character we get in this set. We get this. I know, I think this one isn't named. There's a droid that I own that doesn't have a name, and I'm pretty sure it's the one at the back. So these are named if you do want to go hunt for them and find the names of them. Please leave them in the comments if you do. But this is mostly brick built. The torso, back and head, is brick built with the regular droid arms and legs. We get so many droid arms in this set because this robot here has six arms and it comes with nine accessories. That's right, you might only be seeing six accessories in their hands, but you don't get to hold them all, or the droid don't get to hold them all, because it comes in a pack of nine and it's really handy for use elsewhere. Some of these pieces are actually in my Lego City in the mechanics garage. But just like the other side with the weapons rack, we do have the ability to knock this droid over when Vader has risen and become the Dark Lord of the Sith. He steps off, lets out a cry for, really a cry for help, and starts destroying everything around him. So the fact that they included that as a play feature of the set, and you could stand the other droid here, or perhaps even get Palpatine standing here. It's a jumper plate, so anything that's two studs wide will be able to fly off. There we go. I guess we took out both the Sith at once. But I enjoy it standing Palpatine at the side, just watching as Anakin becomes... Well, he's already Vader at this point, but he steps into the suit and truly becomes Darth Vader, who we see first in A New Hope. But it's not just Vader that will be transforming, as over the next couple of years, Palpatine will get a completely different look, going from that closed up hood to an open one and losing his pupils. It's a big debate in the Star Wars community right now. The Lego Star Wars community whether you like the new, are they Sith eyes? Are they Jedi eyes? Are they just the style that Lego are trying to push? Similar to Funko's black buttons. No one really knows for sure, but I do think it's an upgrade on Palpatine's old look. The set might be rounded off, which will help fit it on certain displays, but it still takes up quite a big footprint compared to some of the other ships. You could probably get two deltas side by side. So what you can do to try and reduce the size that this takes up is pop off the wedges on the left hand side and the right hand side and just remove this whole chunk of the build. You don't need the rest of it. Again, if you want that helmet function, you are going to have to extend the base of this out. But this whole feature of spinning around Anakin to reveal Vader or really any minifigure you wish to spin around. You could definitely modify this just to have a rotating wall and reenact so many other scenes from your favorite franchises. But it's a really neat feature. And if you just want this, you can even have it half and half. I didn't mean to do that. You just need this front chunk and maybe the helmet mechanism, though this can definitely be made a bit smaller. And this is really a great set for that reason. So much of the base was built with times two. In fact, each of these three sections we have removed was built in a pair to be mirrored on the other side. And if you really wanted to be creative, you can add a hook to the back of this and make Vader's transformation into a reef to hang on your door at Christmas time. But I really, really did enjoy putting back together this set. Again, there's so many play features with the two droids that you can pop off on either side. You've got the mechanism that allows you not only to turn the burnt up Anakin or the burnt up Vader into Darth Vader and allow him to rise from his despair, I guess. I don't know, he looked pretty down when he left Kenobi, or when Kenobi left him on Mustafar. 
but also to put the helmet on you've got quite a few minifigures or characters shall we say to play with one two three droids two burnt up vaders and also palpatine to the side that's six characters in this small build so it's really really cool but i don't need to tell you that because by the looks of the comments on the poll when this was suggested you all seem to like it so let me know if you did pick up this set do you still have it built and still on your display this would make a great diorama if you could incorporate this turning mechanism into the front so i'll definitely be giving that a go in the far off future if you did enjoy this video i would appreciate a like and check out all the other videos on your screen but that's all for this video may the bricks be with you always